Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Courtney here at Maria B, your guide to all things PhD, lifestyle and productivity. As I entered the final months of my PhD, I was reflecting on what would I have wanted to know as a first year PhD student and also as I'm at the crossroads of writing up and gathering all my ideas and thoughts that I would have had from my first year, I realized there were a few things that I should have worked on in my first year and the earlier years of my PhD. And and so today I wanted to create this video which talks about the things that you can focus your energy on in the first year of your PhD program. So the PhD is a marathon, it is three to four years of hard intense work and what you do in that first year can kind of set you up in a good way or if you're not organized enough it can be a bit hard for you when you get to the latter stages of the PhD. I'm gonna break this video down into three sections. The things that you can do in your first year to develop your skills as a researcher and ensuring that you set yourself up for success as a PhD student, as well as a more personal side of the PhD process, how you can set yourself up. And then I'm gonna just briefly touch on some things that you should not do in your first year. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about that I think is really important in terms of setting you up for success from first year to the final year of your PhD is creating a system. Now when I say creating a system, this is broken down into many different layers because a PhD in of itself is multifaceted. There's literature, there's writing, there's idea generation, there are notes, there's feedback and all of these things you have to keep track of over those three to four years. So when I say create a system, I'm referring to creating a system for each of these little, not well, not little, they're going to be big components, but creating a system for how you manage and keep track of these things. One of the things to mainly think about when you're creating your system is file storage and naming conventions. It's good to come up with your own naming conventions for file storage whether it be naming it by date, when it's modified and stuff like that. Also, ensure that you create folders that are identifiable. It can be really easy to lose track of different work that you have written if you do not have proper file storage. And while we're on file storage, it would be good to ensure that when setting that up, that you put that on the cloud or something that regularly backs up. Another element of your system that you should think about is how are you going to keep track of your notes? What are you going to use for note taking? Whether it be note taking for notes from your supervisor, note taking from reading literature. Another YouTuber, um, Lucy Kizik, she did a, a very useful video on note taking and taking notes from literature in Evernote. So I'll link that in, in the description bar below as well. Something else in addition to using Evernote and note taking apps that I found useful useful is creating powerpoints that is one way that you can keep track of your ideas anything that you've read results etc and whenever you have to present you already have something on hand in one of my recent videos i talked about how your ideas throughout your phd are going to change so one of the things that you would have to do is keep track of your ideas they're your ideas they're going to shape your work you do not want to lose them so within that system try to set up something that you can keep track of your ideas whether it be bullet journaling or something digital i know rome research and notion are very good tools for that i've been using notion and it really has worked for me in terms of suiting my brain and how my brain works but you can also check out thomas frank and ali abdal they have videos on these different productivity apps and you just choose the one that works for you so overarchingly ensure that you create a system a system that works for you you know a brain outside of your brain creating that second brain essentially to make sure that you're keeping track of things because four years is a long time and things can fall away as you go along your first year is that year where you're building the foundation for your research you have your research proposal but you need to examine what is out there and what has been done and in your first year I think you should really spend time doing a literature review and by a literature review I mean identifying key authors key practitioners in your field and what are they writing what reports are coming out you focus not just on peer-reviewed literature but also on real literature for example for myself I am working in that policy field and a lot of the work that I am doing there's a lot of grey literature and not so much peer-reviewed literature so it just keeps me abreast of what is happening so make sure you do a detailed literature review it'll help you to identify the gaps that are in your subject 
area. It would bring you up to speed on different methodologies that have been applied and also help you in shaping your work going forward. And reading literature and having references is critical to writing your thesis. So from the very get-go, the beginning of your PhD, you need to develop a structure for how you're going to read papers, how you're going to store papers that you need to read, how you're going to keep track of the papers that you have read, and ensure that you have those references ready to insert into any documents that you write, your articles, etc. I did a video on useful apps for PhD students, which I'll link above. You need to get a reference manager, whether it be Mendeley, Zotero, there are quite a few others out there. A reference and manager would save you a lot of time, but make sure that you decide how you're going to do, separate, you know, what I've read, what I'm going to read, and, and then how you're going to keep notes for those. And coming out of that literature review would be exposed, as I said, to different methodologies. So in your first year, it is important to spend some time thinking about how am I going to conduct my research? Am I going to use qualitative methods, quantitative methods, lab work, what data needs to be collected? Spend some time planning out your PhD and the outcomes you want. Set a goal for yourself. For me, that was I wanted my research and whatever I produced to be a practical solution to the challenges that small island developing states were facing. So I had to approach it a bit differently from just a purely academic perspective. So you need to spend some time scoping out what you want and that's where your supervisor can help you for sure but plan your phd plan your methodology spend some time writing that down and that's where literature review and exploring the topic can really help now in your first year make sure you spend time looking through that handbook or manual that you would have been given and understand what is required of you not just in your first year but for the remainder of your phd Please include your ethics form, where there's any data collection issues. You need to make sure that you complete those forms that your university may require you to do before you can do any data collection. It's quite common that you have to fulfill certain graduate school courses or a number of credits. One of the things that I would advise first year students to do is try to cover as many of those courses as possible in the first year. So in that year, make sure that you try to cover as many courses as possible, identify what is required of you and try to fulfill those requirements for your PhD program early on so that later on you can focus on the work and writing and all the good stuff. My next bit of advice where I think you can really spend some time is developing skill sets and building up on maybe the skills that you don't quite have or knowledge areas and the gaps that exist in your knowledge. Maybe that is learning how to use a different software or maybe that you're coming from another field and you have to use a different type of data collection, explore those areas and identify where you can build on those strengths and weaknesses. PhD is four years, but in your first year, I think it's, it's, it's a bit early, but not too early for you to start thinking about after the PhD as well. So within identifying the skill sets that you need for your PhD, also spend some time identifying maybe what your options are post PhD and identify those skill sets and courses that can help you develop those skill sets, not just for your PhD, but life after PhD. One of the things that is very beneficial as a first year student to do in terms of understanding the scope and direction that you can take is get involved. Network with others and by networking that can include attending conferences, attending training sessions, hackathons, programs where you can interact with other scholars um, and share your research, get feedback on your research, not just from your supervisor, but from others and experts in your field to assist with that what you can do in your first year is you know make a list of conferences that you would like to attend try to attend a few of those in the first year maybe make a schedule for how you're going to write papers and abstracts to get into those conferences if you have to present to attend and if there are side events and so forth that you can go that can contribute to your phd in the first year try and make some time to go because it would definitely help with shaping your scope of work for the research now on that front of academic conferences and abstracts and journals one of the things i would also say is start scoping out journals look at the different journals that are covering your area that you would like to publish in um, the journals that 
associated with different conferences and understand stylistic requirements for these journals. But also if you are new to writing academic papers, while reading and doing your literature review, pay attention to how some of these authors are writing stylistically and this can help to inform how you can produce your work in the future. So I just touched on writing and something that I would advise you to definitely keep doing in your first year is keep writing. In your first year, you're exploring, you're doing your literature review and you're just collecting so much information. But it's important that we dump all of that sometimes, whether it be in journals, if you keep writing papers to keep track of what you're doing. I mentioned having a system for note taking, etc. But make sure that you keep writing, whether it's your methodology, abstract, um, ideas, ideas or chapters that flow on from what you've read. Try to try to keep writing because eventually all those little bits of work that you put in are going to feed into the larger thesis when it comes down to the end. And also in your first year, I don't know how this works for some other um, jurisdictions, but in the UK, our first year is really our preliminary or MPhil year. At the end of that 12 to 18 months, we have to do our upgrade to full PhD. At the end of that year, you have to show that you have been working, you have progress, you have a plan for your PhD and you, that the work that you have is going to be substantive. If you keep writing, you're always going to have some bit of work that you can present to show that you have been productive. My final tip from the perspective of your academic journey and research your life is build a relationship with your supervisor. In your first year, it's really important that you understand how your supervisor works. Taking time to do this would really help you in two ways. One, you'll understand if they are the right fit for you and if you need to change a supervisor, if you need to get secondary or third supervisor. Most times, a core supervisor is mandatory, but understanding how they work will help you to deliver in the manner that they want. So ask them what their expectations are of you and you kind of gauge that relationship and build a relationship because something that's really important in addition to having a supervisor that can guide you academically is having somebody that is a human and that can understand that if certain life events happen, they can support you in those situations and they can provide advice aside from just having you churn out papers. Understanding how they work and how it would enhance your PhD experience because one of the things that really bug a lot of PhD students is a lack of support that they may get from their supervisors. So make sure you spend time to understand who your supervisor is, are they the best fit for you, how they work, how the both of you can work together to make sure that you maximize your PhD experience and your outputs. Now, as I, I start to go into the more personal side of what you should do in the PhD, my first and most important tip is to take care of yourself. Now, coming into a PhD, you think of it as a very daunting process, and it is. It is a marathon. It is three to four years of your life that you have dedicated. It is important in your first year that you find a routine that works for you. And by finding a routine that works for you, I mean you make sure that you take time for yourself, whether it be exercising, make sure you find your stress relieves and the different activities that make your life in of itself outside of the PhD enjoyable. From a more individualistic standpoint, I would say identify and understand how you work as a person. When is best time for you and when are you most productive? Is it morning? Is it early morning? Late night? Identify the times that work best for you. Then merge these with other factors such as lab times, when you can get your different equipment, access to your building and so forth. Another thing that I would say spend time in your first year doing is identifying or setting up ways to measure your progress. In Carl Newport's book Deep Work, which is a book I recommend that new PhDs read, he suggests having these progress or success markers. Having these would really help because a PhD is four years. And a lot of us come straight out of undergrad or a master's program and we're quite accustomed to having grades as feedback and telling us how well we're doing. But a PhD is very autonomous and sometimes it could be overwhelming where you don't really understand how much work that you're doing. So by keeping track and setting these targets, whether it be writing 100 words a day, reading five articles a week, you can know that you're making good progress as you go along. And finally, to spend some time planning out your fin financials, identifying what your needs are personally and the needs of your PhD and ensure that your funding, whether it be your, your self-funded or your scholarship, 
can cover that and ensure that you have a plan for your PhD that allows you to complete within a time frame for your funding deadline. I covered things that you can do that will set you up success in your PhD but some things that I think you should not do in your first year are don't go too hard do not burn yourself out now PhD is a marathon not a sprint and in the first year you want to prove yourself but it's important that you take time for yourself your mental and physical health are both as important as the progress you make in your work those would determine how well you perform at the end of it all so make sure that although you're working hard, that you take time and you factor in breaks, that you work reasonable hours, hours that are good for you. Everybody works differently, but please do not put too much pressure on yourself because your first year is really exploratory and your supervisors understand and know that. So don't go too hard. Two, don't try to be a perfectionist in the first year. The first year is for you to explore. So do not let that hinder your progress. As I said, have those key indicators that can tell you, okay, I'm actually doing work because time can go on. But you know, if you're not publishing and others are publishing, don't compare yourself and don't let you know comparison of progress be an issue for you in the first year. It's just your first year. Three, do not isolate yourself, whether that be from other activities, because some PhD supervisors tell their students, let your PhD be your life. So do not isolate yourself from others because it's very important to have that support whether it be other PhD students but also don't isolate yourself from other topics you know your passion for doing a PhD has been shaped by other subjects throughout your academic career so immerse yourself in other things keep abreast of other issues because those might feed into your work and help your work to be more holistic in the end all right, that video was a bit lengthy, but I do hope that it is helpful or was helpful to you if you are a first year PhD student or any way along in your journey. If there are other tips that you would like to share, please drop them in the comment section down below and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. And I'll catch you in the next video.